Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Agency Life. I am thrilled to be reconnected with Sarah from Bright Inbound from Australia. And Sarah and I were, we got introduced to each other in 2013 when I first started working in HubSpot. And I was given a small little group of agencies, I think about 15, who had um, were working with HubSpot in Australia. And I was given that uh, little pocket of business that we eventually grew up to 150. So Sarah and I have known each other for seven years. Welcome to the show, Sarah. It's great to have you here. Yeah, thank you, Claudia. It's really great to be here and really good to see you again. It is, isn't it? So yeah. many years. I know <laughs> when you that. came on the phone, we used to speak so regularly and I've, I've been there very yeah. early part of your business. So I'm really keen to hear all about where you are now, but let's go, let's step, take a step back because I do know your background, but I'd love you to share that with our audience right now. Tell us how yeah. you actually got on this show for Agency Lab. Give us a bit of your background and uh, your, yeah. your, uh, where, where you came from. <laughs> Okay, so I um, have a long career, I guess, as a marketer um, as in B2B, so working for big, big tech companies, so global multinational tech companies, as well as the small startups. Um, and so that was my, my career, you know, as a you know, B2B marketing and sales um, yeah. in the tech industry and, and, um, and telco industry for about 10 years, 10, 15 years, and then... Um, then I had kids <laughs> and, and kids and, you know, a big job, big, you know, it was an APEC marketing job for a multinational just didn't, didn't work for me. Right. And, uh, so I went out on my own as a freelance marketing consultant in about 2009. Uh, so yeah, so I've worked client side for, for a long time and then, then switched over into being kind of a, a default agency in by many ways, because, I would put, recommend similar campaigns, so things that I'd done in my previous life, I'd recommend those types of campaigns for the clients that I was working with. And that's how I came into the HubSpot world, is I was looking for some technology infrastructure to actually make these campaigns happen. Um, because you just, you can't do content inbound marketing without some type of technology infrastructure. So mm-hmm. that's why I started in started this business really so wow yeah <laughs> and it's grown from there i mean when i started with hubspot they didn't have email they didn't have any emailing and they were absolutely dead set certain they were never ever going to be doing email <laughs> we're wow. like come on come on we need <laughs> really <email." laughs> yeah really what was the reasoning behind that and and what alternatives were they giving were they recommending you go off to mailchimp or something well i went i went i went and used campaign monitor actually Mm. so that was really good and you could white label that as an agency so that was another little revenue stream so um they were just saying no there's so many good you know email marketing providers around we don't need to be doing that wow come on it's critical yeah (laughs) it's critical in marketing to do email anyway they soon addressed that. Although only recently, only recently they've done the emailing, you know, the, the graphical email where you can actually build a decent looking template inside yes. HubSpot. That was only last year. I mean, that's, that's right. Anyway. Yeah, Sorry, I'm getting down into the nitty gritty. <laughs> no, I love this. This is like a trip down a um, memory lane for us <laughs> because I do remember the old CMS when I start, first started in HubSpot and it was very mm-hmm. clunky, tw- 2013. It was very clunky. Um, it was before a lot of the developers came in. So I, I do remember that. And so 2009, you, you started the agency as it, as it yeah. stands now. And, mm-hmm. and what type of things yeah. were you doing? What, who were you working with? What kind of clients and things? Yeah, so um, a bit of both. So I had a big tech client, uh, which was, you know, my history. So I had, yeah. had those guys and they were really doing tech stuff. So we were doing a lot of events and things for them. So not not really, you know, not HubSpot related. And then I had a few kind of more growth companies that were, that were you know, looking at lead generation and how mm-hmm. we generate leads. And, and some of them had never considered using content assets, you know, to downloadable content, to grow your list. And it was all a bit like, ooh, ooh, ooh yeah. this is, you haven't thought about <laughs> that before. Which for, for me, from my background, was like, well, that's what we do every day. You know, that's what we do. That's what our campaigns were all about, you know. Yeah. Anyway, growing, growing your database of leads, nurturing them, handing them over to sales. That's, you know, that was the bread and butter and still is the bread and butter of this, to this day for any kind of B2B, any kind of tech company, really. 
any kind of company, really. That's how everyone's doing that, that now. So, um, yeah, so that's what I was doing, working with, working with big techs and also working with, this, with, with the kind of smaller, more growth companies. And, you know, I liked both of those things, but I think, and I've come to realise over, over time, is that I much prefer working with um, the growing kind of startup companies mm -hmm. rather than the big tech companies. Just, you know, while you have more money with the big tech companies, sometimes, not all the time, you also have more constraints. Right. And, uh, and more people and just everything takes way too long to get done. And that's not my, I want to get stuff done, get in yeah. there and get stuff done and make some changes. And I want to, you know, work with companies who are like, right, let's just go do this. Let's just go do this and see if it works. And if it doesn't, then we can pivot and change. And you, know, you just can't, you just don't have that kind of mobility in a, in a bigger company. So, so yeah, I've, I've been actively seeking to work with, you know, working with those kind of more growth oriented mid-sized businesses mm -hmm. you know, who are just really kind of, um, and a lot of times, you know, particularly also I'm going back to tech companies, you end up working with businesses that have developed a great product and they're very developer centric. So they've yeah. got this product, it's very developer centric and you look at their marketing and you just go, oh my God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> kill me now you know it's just very it's all tech speak it's all like how fabulous the features are and the function and this widget and that widget and oh you just and jargon and, and you just go oh it just it just makes it so hard for buyers to understand what they're buying and and why that why they should care so taking that I really love that challenge of going into an organisation and kind of stripping all that techno babble away <laughs> to, the, to the essence of what it is that what it is for the customer, what it means for the customer, what kind of transformation will your customer have by subscribing to your product or service or buying your widget. They don't give a shit about widget. Oh, sorry, Sparry. No, it's okay. Well, I, I cover that up. Come on, I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I lived in Australia. I'm surprised I don't curse yeah. on it. <laughs> we'll see. Exactly. Anyway, it was very mild cursing, by the way. Yeah, we're I'm all good. Oh, yeah, I can be. It could yeah. be a lot worse than Australia. Oh, yes. <laughs> we're good. Anywho, sorry, yeah. I've got sidetracked. <laughs> uh, but yeah, helping um, yeah, with yeah, that I'm jargon like, yeah. and yeah, making it more. Yeah. That, that's like it's fascinating. Yeah, I, I've definitely experienced some of that. Where they're so passionate about the product, and there's a lot of tech speak that they forget to speak as humans to humans. <laughs> yeah, and, and they also get so close to their product, hmm. and they get so close to the product that that they can't see the story. You know, yeah, the, the what the what what it actually delivers for for a client. And I think that's that's the area that I love to do and the area I think that I'm good at, you know, pulling out that essence of, of what it is that, that, that is important to the customer. Incredible. Um, and not just magically doing it on my own, like actually going and interviewing and talking to customers too, mm. to get that, to get that knowledge. Because otherwise, you know, if you don't actually go do that and go interview people, you, you don't get, you're, you're making a plan based on assumptions. Even if you right. go run a bike, it's own a workshop, yeah, salespeople and new stuff, and I've been guilty of absolutely doing that. Yeah, know, without if you don't go and actually interview your clients and and hear from them, then you you're missing great swathes of fantastic insight and data. Amazing. So, like, yeah. you, you mean the clients of the the company that you're working? The clients for? of the yes, client. Yes, yeah. got it. Yeah. And and probably yeah. the and probably interviewing in a different way, not doing the big buyer persona workshop, but doing one on ones with the CEO, one on ones with people as well oh, as their clients. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I yeah. actually use the when I do a workshop these days. I don't so much go into the detail. It's more about getting everyone in the same room and getting yeah. some agreement on who the person is on who. Mm. On, who the target is because everyone it's amazing everyone comes in with very different ideas about who the target customer is and you're just kind of going whoa okay i didn't yeah, didn't see that coming <laughs> and it's revelationary inside the room as well for people right. in the company to go, well you know i didn't yeah. realize we were so connected about who we were actually going after yeah so that's great in and of itself and then once you get that nailed down go and interview the internal stakeholders and then go and interview the customers and then if you can go and interview deals that they lost oh that's a great one Ooh, yeah that's really a great good. one 
you'll get the real juice. I love that tip. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. A great I one. Know it's, it's it's really it's really important. Um, mm-hmm. um, like the more I do marketing, the more I kind of go. Everything is based on that. You know, yeah, it's so foundational to to everything that you do. Your messaging, the the where, where the direction of the product, where you go, and which channels that you use to promote your content, what kind of content we should be creating. It all will come back if you just keep, you know, talking to your customers. Incredible. That's a fantastic tip. I, I hope an agency is listening to this and taking that on and putting it in as part of their um, onboarding <laughs> process. You have yeah. been in the inbound community for such a long time, Sarah. 2009, like, you know, and, and before that, you know, <laughs> I like to call it, we're, we're veterans, we're veterans. Veterans. <laughs> Just like, get my new frame out. Inbound, inbound okay. veterans. What have you seen in the, what have you seen as the changes over the last 11 years that you uh, you could share with us um hmm. well i mean i am con- continue to be a massive hubspot fan and supporter i really love the way the growth stack has has gone horizontal mm. um, crm is amazing i haven't really dabbled in the server side of it but this the, the integration with crm and the and you know, the whole marketing piece is really phenomenal right and the way that HubSpot has, has grown and, and the support and the academy is all you know it's tremendous so that's really really great um you know it's obviously more people who are doing inbound um now more more partners more more customers thinking about it um but i still there's still some fundamental things about inbound i think that people um I don't know if they misunderstood. There's a couple of things. So I think about still coming back to that thing I was talking about before. It's not about you. It's about mm. it's about them. And I think that applies for inbound marketing as well as inbound selling. Yeah. You know, if we and that's a very difficult conversation to have with a sales team. I think yes. that whole you know you, you and I both know about inbound selling, and we both think had the same sales coach for a while. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> You taught us all, you know, you know, softly, softly, baby steps, ask yep. curious questions, don't blow through, you know, the traffic lights to green, just that kind of stuff. Yep. It's really hard to kind of get a sales team to do. I think that those kind of that, that softly, softly approach with inbound leads, you have to, to educate them on the difference between an inbound lead and, you know, someone that they made at a trade show. Mm. very different types of types of leads so understanding that inbound mindset not about you and about the difference between an inbound lead and a and a and, a, and an outbound kind of lead mm. um inbounds have the pain but they're not necessarily the right person so you've got to put some kind of nurturing structure around that whereas people that you meet at a trade show or whatever they're probably the right person but they might not have the pain so that's the that's where it's a quite a different nurturing strategy. Yeah. Um, and other things, I guess the other thing about inbound and, you know, is as a, from an agency perspective is that it's enormous to try and wrap your hands around all the marketing, the marketing tactics and techniques that make up inbound. Mm. You know, now we've got, you know, we've got from, oh, you know, from SEO and blogging and email marketing and content creation and website building and uh, ads and social it's just it's just i've personally found it very hard you know to grow an agency that can cover or even hire anybody that can cover that breadth you can't hire in a single person no i think to cover that to cover that skill set breadth and also i kind of struggled with profitability as an agency to have you know, web developers and graphic designers and content creators and project managers, you know, where does it, you know, where does it stop and where do you kind of yeah. go, okay, well, this, this model, I, for me, the model didn't work. Right. Um, as to, to build out that kind of full service agency yeah. model. Yeah, because um, it's so big. Yeah, so how big yeah, did big. you? How big and then, was and the then team? Got, then I've got CRM and sales, and now I've got service as well. It's like oh, I know, you know? right? Exactly. <laughs> how how big was the team that you had? Uh, either full time staff or um, freelancers. Like, how big did you get? Not not massive. You know, but, I think I, I realized pretty quickly that 
one, I didn't want to build a big agency. Right. But I think that, yeah, yeah. that I had to be true to myself mm. and about what success looked like for me. And honestly, it wasn't a big agency because I kept thinking that's what I should be doing. And I was beating myself up about it. You know, you should be a big agency and you yeah. should be doing it. And, and honestly, I didn't really want it. It's one of the reasons why I left the big corporate job because I started managing a team. I didn't yeah. really enjoy managing a team. I liked doing the marketing work. Yeah. Didn't really like managing the team so much. So, so, and that's what happens as you get further and further, more and more senior in an organization, you end up just being a manager and not. Being I know, a right? Yeah. And I love the marketing strategy. Yeah, you're not doing the work that you love. And that's the same in an agency world as well. When you're the agency yeah. owner, you, you started because you love doing the marketing work, but then you have to have people and then the people need to be managed. <laughs> and then you do less of the work that you love. But you've, now, but you've now built an agency that works for you. How did you go through that evolution? And tell us how different it is. Well, it's, it's, it's an ongoing evolution. And I think it's a, a, a don't, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a, always a poster child for success, I guess. It's quite, I'm uncomfortable with that kind of conversation because I think it's a continuing evolution of what's working for me, what's not working, what's working for the clients. And, and so, so, you know, I, when I was trying to build this agency, I, I tried to, I hired, tried to hire senior people, you know, right. experienced people. That didn't work very well because they weren't doers. Okay. So, so they were just kind of, an extra level of management, you know, this is the wrong person. And yeah. then I'd hire juniors and I've hired, hired some terrific juniors. Yeah. And I think that's, that's it continues to be my strategies to hire really good grads, yeah. journalism grads, because also my, my, the work that I do now is more towards content creation and strategy. And I can teach them the marketing strategy piece, but you, to get someone who's a good writer, that is just, Gold and John, is it John Bonini from Databox? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's been talking about that lately on LinkedIn. It's like he's I all saw that hard, this morning, yeah. journalism students. and I'm like, yes, that's that's my secret. Actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we we but, uncovered that a while ago. Don't be telling the world, we might edit this out yeah. of the podcast. No, but it yeah, is true exactly. to find somebody who can write and tell a story, um, especially about something that might be very technical or not very exciting, like you know, machinery. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a yeah, real exactly. skill, it's a real it skill, is. and there's plenty of people out there who can do it. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. So, and there's so, you know, ex journos work can work to deadlines as well. That's right, so yeah, they're really, not afraid of that. It's a critical skill, so. And they can interview. So it's like that's three critical skills that Amazing. that that work for for the business the way that it is the way that it is now. And so I'm I'm actively recruiting ex journalists or journal students, you know, young yep. journal students, and and, and building a, a remote team um, to to do that stuff. And then working with other agencies. And now also the the agency infrastructure environment there's lots of agencies who who work with agencies like me right so there's lots of them who provide white label agency services to go and and do all the you know the hubspot executional pieces yeah so i i haven't i haven't got a formal relationship with any one particular agency i have worked a lot with in the past with some us-based web developer agencies actually right. quite a few with them with Brand Builder Solutions in New Jersey with Joe Jerome. Yeah. Um, I've known Joe for ages. And, uh, and yeah, he was one of, you know, his template, I think, is one of the most downloaded templates. In the I know. It, I think it is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Joe and I work together on a num number of client accounts, actually most of my client accounts, so that, you know, if there's web development work that needs to be done, that's over Jamesky. and he acts as does he have an email address for bright does no he no he no I, I make an introduction so i keep the awesome. walls pretty much so he's not a, he's not you know i just bring him into the fold as part of what i can bring to the table is great is my network of, yeah. of relationships of, of people who can get stuff done essentially yeah so you know and i like joe and his team they're very efficient they're very experienced and yeah uh, and, get stuff done. 
And can you explain to, to people, because I do this a lot of recommendations as well. I'm, I'm a big believer in the, the sort of the bridge, if you like, you know, if you like you're bridging your business um, out, you're not hiring a developer straight in the door. Um, you are actually creating these relationships for people all around. But if we could, if an agency is thinking, I've heard there's been unfortunately things that have not worked out and then there's things that have. Can you explain how that started in the beginning um, working with another agency like in a white label way, part of your network? How, any tips that you can give for agencies who are, oh, I think I want to work with this person, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I've worked with quite a few and some of them, yeah, haven't worked out mm -hmm. and, and it's been quite costly for my business because they just, you know, the budgets have blown out and they didn't deliver what they were supposed to deliver. Mm. Um, so I had to go find another developer. So that right. was, you know, yes. And I don't know whether there's, I'm not sure what I, what we could have done to avoid that. Because mm. uh, the, you know, the agency was well regarded and I'd used them before and, and just, I don't know what the wheels fell off that particular project. Mm. Um, I don't know. With freelancers, I've got a raft of freelancers that I that I use. So if one goes a bit pear shaped or disappears off the face of the earth, so I've happened. That's happened twice actually. Really? Developers have just disappeared. You're like, well, hang on, we were in the middle. All right, okay, moving on. So that's like have the, to have... the business version of ghosting. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. Actually, I have had that happen. They just ghost. So they just go and they don't talk to you ever again. You're like, well, wow. that was weird. That was weird. Very You're strange. in the middle of a kind relationship. Of yeah. So that's yeah. one of the tips that you give is going, don't have one freelancer. Have don't team. have one. Yes. And right. also don't have one, don't have one agency. Right. Have, have a couple that you have work with that you know, you know, that you can go, okay, well, you can just move the cups around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to get, and I just, I guess I'm all about just, being efficient and getting things done. And, yes. and so, yeah, I do have a few agencies that I've worked with before on the time mm -hmm. who I know we can, I can slot them in to Got it. different, to different areas. Yeah. I think one thing uh, you, you might sub subconsciously do this, but I definitely something I have seen is kind of two areas. If you are thinking of working um, with it, it if anyone's listening to this and they're like, oh, I think I want to work with that agency, you start, you know, start off with a small project, you know, like don't be giving them the big, huge thing. So start off small. I, I've, I've seen um, agencies and, and people working together because they have similar values. They get to yeah. know each other. They're similar values. Yeah. They have similar work ethic. They have similar understanding. And, and I feel like I've seen this too many times as well. If you are in the HubSpot community, you are a certain type of person. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's drinking Kool-Aid. It's, it's an understanding of inbound. It's a certain type of mindset. And either... Yeah. It, Perhaps that agency isn't a HubSpot agency, but they definitely have to understand the methodology, the business, the type yeah. of, you know, they might have a, an appreciation for HubSpot, but if they are not, yeah. if they're looking at HubSpot and they're like, oh, I don't really get that, or I'm not, it, it, there's probably going to be a disconnect yeah. there when it comes to yeah. delivering the business. Yeah. They just, there's yeah. things that they're not going to get. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess that, that went without. That... Yeah. 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 partners and things uh, they are from the house the house by agency community already so that was already right you see there you go you've got a level I, yeah. I i had a relationship with joe before we were kind of working together because of the sales coach yeah so joe was also an, an ex <laughs> student of this sales coach so we are we bantered well together so yeah. that was kind of always good to nice yeah. yeah well there you know exactly values you know they get values, on yeah. exactly i think that's a similar thing um, and yeah, now yeah. yeah now we we're starting a new decade a new year what's the kind of direction talk to us about the kind of year you've got planned and i know you like to do things in a 90 day say so you've got your year so what's the agency look like now and and what's the sort of uh, future for for yeah. where you're taking it yeah well i'm, I'm scaling back to to me and my carefully chosen development house and um, writers and scaling back the scope of work that I'm going to be delivering and the way that I'm, the way that I'm going to be delivering it to, I've been putting some models together, um, yeah. business models around more of uh, coaching 
incredible and trained style approach. So, so it's not so much done for you, yeah, but done with you. Done and with it's not, you. But it's, so, and, and and that's not do it yourself. Like here's an online course. See you later. Yeah, it's I'll hold your hand and we'll do these critical pieces together and we'll check in along the way. But I'm going to I'm going to you know help you do this together and help you you know get your HubSpot implementation up, get your mm-hmm. messaging right, get your product strategy right, um, build your campaigns, hire your team, hire another agency if you want to, and I'm going to help them, you know, vet the agency. I'm going to help them recruit staff. Um, wow. And so because what I've also found with clients doing inbound a lot is, is the, you know, onboarding is awesome, HubSpot Academy is awesome, it's kind of overwhelming and I find oh my god incredibly clients that have yeah. been through been through the onboarding which is awesome they're like this is fantastic when it finishes they kind of go oh and if there isn't isn't any ownership internally and they don't have the marketing team that's trained up and skilled internally then the wheels fall off yeah and then if they do go and hire an agency and that goes well for a while and you know agency relationships you know what they last six months twelve months couple of years at best yeah you outsource everything to the agency and the agency runs it for you which is awesome and then when that relationship kind of ends or changes or, yeah and you're back to square one fall off again and yeah. back to fall off. so you really have to commit to owning the strategy in-house and building your team in-house as well to if you if you're 100 committed to doing inbound to, yeah you know, it's it's a big it's a change for a lot of people's marketing strategies too. Yeah. A lot of people don't necessarily fully grasp the always on nature of inbound, you know, that it's, you know, you need to keep blogging. You need to keep, you need to keep publishing social content. You you just can't stop. And when you Mm. stop, you can see, you can see the the results, you know, in your, now in your sources report, just go down. (laughs) down. (laughs) That's right. Falls off and you stop. So, so I don't think I don't think many clients are really fully forewarned about the success of inbound. Means you have to keep you have to keep the momentum up. You have to yeah. keep doing stuff. And I think the best way to keep doing stuff is to own the strategy in house and build your own build build your own content team. You know. Look, I'm seeing that trend over here um, from the States. You know, I work very closely with Impact and that's exactly the area mm-hmm. they're going is about teaching clients how to create their own content, teaching them how to do video, teaching them how to do these things because it is a long game. I think that trend that you're, is, is, is very big as well where a lot of companies are bringing the agency work in-house. So you've, instead of throwing your hands up in the air and going, oh, it's the end of the world, you've gone, let me help you do that. This is incredible. 100%. That's a great opportunity, Sarah. And yeah. that's that. So you're working with CMOs and marketing managers, marketing yeah. directors in companies yeah. to help them. Okay, you, you need to bring it in house. That's probably yeah. at least a year's work to 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 take it in and yeah. probably to help them decide. Yeah, yeah and to help them decide. Um, I, I think this is to help them decide as well. What are they going to outsource? So they go, go we're going to outsource SEO, right? Let's find the best SEO agency for you. Um, the rest of it we're yeah. going to do in house. I think that's amazing. Yeah. I, I think an agency owner listening today about, you know, thinking about where am I going in the future? What am I going to do? Or am I going to be doing this forever? As an agency owner, you've learned all the tech tools. You've learned um, how to manage a team. You've learned all of these different areas that you can actually help a CMO build out the best marketing team that they can have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love exactly. that opportunity. So, That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and it also and also personally it provides me with with flexibility mm. to take on. And I, I don't, you know, I can have a handful of clients and and work work flexibly around, you know. School holidays, school holidays right now in Australia. So right, yeah, I'm, exactly. I've applied, I'm working from home and then I'm going tomorrow and running a, running a content brainstorming session, yeah. bringing the donut, doing a big content brainstorm, getting oh. out of it, getting, <laughs> their, getting their content engine cranking for them in the, in the new year. So, so yeah, it, that's also a big part of the, mo- the, the model is, that, is the flexibility for me. 
incredible and I, I think that's when you started working for yourself like you said so many agency owners are in the same situation they went I didn't like working for the corporate I wanted to work for myself to do the marketing strategy then you end up with a business with a load of people and you're like ah, hang on I'm now managing people and I'm not doing any yeah. marketing work yeah, yeah. I love where you've come the evolution is incredible that's yeah. that's fantastic <laughs> well, oh, you back to the genie. <laughs> Having said that, right back to the beginning, but with a much more focused model mm. and a and a and a and a process to follow, mm. because I think that's also important for both for me and the team and for clients is to, you know, put a process in front of them and say, this is what we're going to do, and you know, over these next ninety days, we're going to do these three things, mm. and we're focusing on that, and focusing too is also yes. particularly hard. I think for yeah all these you know particularly business owners they've got you know these checklists that are incredibly long and so so focusing three things two, three, things, <laughs> three things um three things over 90 days is what, is what we're going to focus on no amazing more. um there's this amazing article and i i did some i did some study a couple of years ago um with a guy called todd herman who's who does the 90 day year and so and so he's it's all about um high performance Right. Um, high performance coaching. He does high performance coaching and he has a methodology around around 90 days, which is it follows um, similar to sort of a, the agile framework, but it's not really agile. You know, it's not, not not all that kind of terminology, but it is you know, you plan you plan your 90 days, you know, your big your big goal. Yeah. And you set goals, you know, good, better, best goals. So not love. one goal, you good, good, better, best, which I love as well, because then you can, you know, Anyway, I love that. And then you, then you do two week sprints. So uh, what are we going to do in these next two weeks? And that's, that's, that's where we, that's what we do. Oh, fantastic. We it, we it down into, into that kind of manageable approach. But I think yeah. the whole thing about um, what Todd talks about is also the, is context switching. And so, and I think it's, it's so prevalent everywhere everyone is distracted everyone's on their phones you know, mm -hmm. the, the attention span for people is it's really oh, really bad we're, and so we're terrible. what happens when you, when you context switch which is you know trying to do two things at once is that you lose so much time in switching your brain from one thing to the next thing and there's a, i think it's a um i've forgotten the name of the guy he did the study but there's a, a actual study on how much time just gets lost in switching your focus from one thing to another so the whole multitasking yeah. idea is bollocks really. it's totally and, and even and we're saying that as women by the way because you know like, do you know yes, what i mean because we're, 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 oh, we're well yes, known for that. yeah we're well known for that like, <laughs> and maybe you know, physically in the kitchen by having the kitchen and looking after the kids and keeping an eye on the telly maybe that's a multitasking but when it comes to work i think it might be cal newport um, when he talked about deep work um i think mm -hmm. the study is in there as well if, if, if anyone's listening to it and you also bring up something really good there that i'd like to touch on because huge conversation going on in the um inbound hubspot digital agency world is about retainers this whole concept mm -hmm. of you can sign someone up for 12 months you know can you <laughs> like it's a big commitment and um, you you physically might need to um have them in a 12-month contract with the software that you've got them but for your perspective 90 days doing a great job at 90 days to earn the next 90 days to earn the next 90 days yeah you earn yeah, the retainer absolutely. yeah yeah and i don't and i've never been one to sign people up for 12-month contracts mm. and I actually if it's not working let's just call it quits you know, yeah. I, I yeah. go, after after a month, if it's not working, I'm not going to make you do 90 yeah. days after a month. I know, you're so, going to force them into it. <laughs> You'd no, because yeah. neither of us want that. No. no. It's, it's, and so it, I would, I categorically do not sign people up for for long retainers mm -hmm. as such. Retainer is has kind of got that bad connotations. I think, you know, Back in the old days when I was working, become, yeah, we had PR companies who were on these, you know, retainers, retainers and they were, <laughs> and were like, what did they actually do? We don't know. Yeah, we no, couldn't tell. They came in for lunch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that, you know, for me also, retainers kind of like, oh, I, don't, I don't like the word. It's yeah. retainer. It's, I, my work is based on an action plan, which is yes. the, the first stage. So we do an action plan and then, you know, and then we kind of go. Well, how do we want to do, how do we want to execute this plan? Got you know, it. 
how much of my time is needed, how much of your time is needed, who else do we need to do this? Do you need to go build a website? Okay, so when we need to bring in this person to do that bit. So it's more, you know, the action plan is a month. That's it. We've got, we've got the strategy in place for the next 90 days there. And then we go, okay, well, this is what you need to do to do those next 90 days from the action plan. Brilliant. Um, and so, the, so, yeah, my retainer, it's more, it's a, it's a, it's a services agreement, I guess. Got it. But yeah. it's very, um, yeah, it's, if it's not working, then it's not working. And then we just draw a line in the sand and say, that's. Let's move on. I, I love that. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah. Now, yeah. Um, agency life is, you know, as we know, there's ups and downs and you've talked about some great, uh, good stories there. And you did touch on one of the things that you uh, didn't work out, you know, where agency, where you had freelancers kind of went uh, MIA. Um, another thing, because we do like to share advice with agencies, mistakes that have happened in the past. And so that somebody listening to this can go, oh, I'm in that situation right now. And another one I'd love to share is about just this over-reliance of, of clients calling the shots too much. Uh, something you really, um, I'd love to just share about yeah. when the client is not listening to you. Can you please talk a little bit more about that? Because I feel somebody's going to be listening to this and going, oh my goodness, yeah. I'm exactly in that situation. So um, yeah. without naming names, you can maybe describe the situation, what happened and, and how you got out of it and uh, what you learned. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I got out of it particularly successfully, but I think that um, I don't know. I, I'm a bit of a doer. Right. So what I find is that is that personally I get in and I get end up doing stuff. When yeah. I just lay the strategy out and I kind of get get involved in it too much and then I end up kind of, yeah, lowering my value in many ways because I end up being a doer. And, right. uh, and okay. that's not, and that's not, um, what I'm doing moving forward, but mm -hmm. I have been in, in you know in a client relationship where where the agreement was to, to build a website in a certain way using a template, which I always you know yep. the templates are awesome. Let's not reinvent the wheel. You know the website's not that you know yeah. they're not that special. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> 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 template will be fine. But in this particular instance, I didn't push back against the we're really special. We absolutely need a special, special design from our special, special developer who wasn't actually a developer. He was a graphic designer. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh months of pain. Months and months of pain of trying to build a website that should have. If I'd stuck to my, no, we're doing it with a template, I can do template websites in two weeks. Right. I know. Two weeks using yeah. a template. Seriously. You know, you do all your content work. And that's the other thing. So I'm going to go off on a tangent. No, please. About building a website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people build websites. When the people build websites, I see them, they get, they get all carried away with the look and the feel and the blah, blah, blah. And they don't do the content. They go, oh, we need some content to go in here. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you freaking kidding me? That should be the very first thing you do. Yep. Content first, website design second. That's right. And I don't see that happening. You? I know. I no, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't see it happening at all. And if anyone's going, I don't know where to start with that. I, I, I'm, I'm a huge advocate right now of, because obviously I've been a huge fan of Marcus Sheridan's for a long time, but I've read his two books, the revised edition and the other one. If you are struggling to know where to start with, when it comes to content, of course, HubSpot's got great information, but you get, they ask, you answer and you build, mm. it will give you all the information you need, yeah. text and video of what to put on a website and then design it. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. it's one book, yeah. get that book, get the content written out and mm -hmm. the videos done and then put yeah. the website together. <laughs> also, um, Donald Miller's story brand is awesome. really good for that. Brilliant. Too. We'll put sure. the links in this for, for, the, for yeah. anyone who's listening. Story, story brand framework is fantastic for, you know, yeah, anyway. Great. Yeah. He's got great resources. Yeah. So, yeah, I got kind of sucked into this, mm -hmm. you know, accommodating their desire for specialness um which didn't work very well yeah <laughs> so yeah it just turned into an interminably long website development engagement which yeah didn't get the results that we were looking for from an inbound perspective because we never got to that bit you know mm -hmm. so we 
yeah, ended the agreement. <laughs> yeah. So when they like, and you made, you made a good point there, when they stop listening to you, when you're not the expert and you're not, uh, you know, of course they can give input, but they've hired you for a particular reason. And if you're giving them something that's contrary to what they hired you for, why do they hire you? <laughs> you right, know? exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I know, and I think that's a hard thing for an for an agency to swallow a bit. Is is that you know, okay, well, they've they've stopped listening to me now, mm. and I, and it's very hard to think to recover from that. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, so yeah. you have to you have yeah. to have your antennas up for that yeah. kind of situation happening to you. Really, yeah. be very wary. Wary once you start seeing that happening to nip it in the bud because, and even if it means having a, having a hard conversation, um, mm -hmm. I hate, I hate having hard conversations. It's not, I know. You no, know, it's not nice. This but is having the... that, hard, having that hard conversation with, with both with yourself first mm -hmm. and then with, with the client and go, mm. this is, this is not what we agreed. This is not the direction that I, that I recommended. And then maybe say, well, where do we, where would you like to go from here? Mm. And yeah. maybe, and maybe you can, maybe you can salvage it from there by having that type of open, transparent conversation instead of just sticking your head in the sand, going, "We're just going to make it work. We're just going to make it work. <laughs> we're going to hack through this." Um, and, I, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that this is puts a very good point as well. This is also where you listen in the qualifying stages. You know, um, you you have to have your all your ears wide, <laughs> and I say all because you know your your all your senses tuned into this per person. If they are constantly questioning things that you're saying or going, mm, I don't know if they're if they're pushing back in the qualifying process, what are they going to be like, you know, after that? Right. So really yeah, listen yeah. to who they are. Are they agreeing? Not that you want them to be a walkover. You want them to ask good questions. But if it's a constant, yeah. you know, that sort of um, devil's advocate kind of thing that goes too far and you're like, you're questioning everything. Why did you? Do, why are you hiring me? You know, yeah. Um, yeah, it, that's yeah. interesting. Um, I like we're, we'll start to get to the to the top of the the show here. But I, a couple of things I'd love to um, just just wrap up on here. I'm really keen to hear about the difference that meditation has made in your personal <laughs> life. That's also helping yeah. you in your agency. Talk to me about that because I'm we love it. to share some advice with agency owners on how to balance their energy okay. and how we're going to do all these things. So tell us about the meditation that yeah. you've been doing well you know i've heard for years you know lots of friends and you know people oh, you know all those top entrepreneurs they get up every morning at 5 30 and they <laughs> meditate and i'm like who are these people this is, nuts. Like, yeah. this is stupid and, and you know i just never and i did i did lots of yoga and i still do yoga and i love yoga and my i'm a I have a history as a dancer, so I could do yoga, and I really loved yoga. And I always thought the meditation bit was a bit pointless. <laughs> you would you skip that part. Awful. <laughs> yeah, skip that part. No, totally. And then I, I can't remember. I then and some well, Todd Herman, that that group of people, um, introduced me to a bit of meditation there. And I, I did get more interested in, interested into it for the yoga as well. Mm -hmm. So I started to kind of lose that competitive side of yoga and actually drop into the into kind of the the more emotional piece of yoga. You know, the the getting into the flow and really kind of tapping into the the feelings that it brings up for you. And then um, I had another girlfriend who had breast cancer, mm -hmm. and then she went through this meditation course and told me about it years ago. And then Finally, I went on to an intro talk with this guy um, in Bondi, and and he's so not a woo woo yogi. I think okay. that's what I liked about him as well. He used to, he still DJs, and he used to live a very wild life. Right. So, so he has this kind of street cred, I think, not so much kind of wholesome granola vegan kind of thing vibe. <laughs> he's a vegan now, <laughs> and he used to, he yeah. doesn't drink alcohol now. He's teetotal, but He's been, you know, to the edge of, you know, right. the, that the, stuff. The party. Anyway, night. so I went to his intro talk. It sort of resonated with me. And so I ended up signing up for his Vedic meditation. Box. Here I am crossing my legs now on my chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, and I went along to his, his course, which was a three-day course. And, um, and, and just the way that he explained 
what meditation was for. Just, I don't know whether I was just really open to hearing that then and there. At the time. But it really, at the time. And, and, it was, and, and the way he explains it is, is just easy and, and not something, and I'm very much someone who likes to do things properly. Like I need to know what the proper way to do stuff yeah. is. And he's like, no, there's no proper way. You've got your mantra. Um, but it doesn't matter, you know, they just let it go. And it's all about acceptance. Mm. And I think the thing about meditation was that is it's the only thing that releases stress. It is. And, it, and releases pre past stresses and, and stresses from the day. Yeah. And I find that when I do a meditation and now this is the crazy thing. I set my alarm at 5.30 Woo! and I get up and I do meditation. Oh. I'm like, I don't know who I am. Who am I? <laughs> who am I? I don't know. So I'm getting up at 5.30 and actually looking forward to it. Oh, so amazing. To that three minutes of meditation in the morning before I start my day. Um, and it sets the, it sets the tone of the day off. Yep. And then if I can, I try and get another 20 minutes in. Um, I struggle with that one in the afternoon. But it's a, it's a... It's an energy pickup because yes. it's a natural energy pickup and a stress release. It is. Yep. It absolutely. Yeah. It's a reset of the buttons. And absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, yeah you've. Uh, it's it's V E D I C. If anyone wants to have a, a look online for that, yeah. uh, and it's a one a brand of meditation. So yeah, and yeah. TM is just a brand of meditation, and I think yeah. it's it's not mindfulness and it's not manifesting. Yeah. It's actually just sitting and being with with yourself and just letting. And then if, if the thoughts come along, then that's fine. Yeah. You come back to your it doesn't matter. Mm. He actually, Matt, the teacher, explained it to me, well, explained it to all of us. Like, he said, you know when thoughts come into your head when you're meditating, don't get angry or upset. They're like, they're like friends at a party. Like your mantra is your best friend at the party. Yeah. And when you go off and talk to other friends and then you begin, you come back to your best friend. Back to your mantra yeah. again. Oh, fantastic. Well, I can see the difference in you just lighting up there when you talk about it. It's fantastic. And I, I think that's a, a, a particular fan of that. I love that sound of that one, but there's another one called Ziva, Z-I-V-A by Emily yes. Fletcher. Yeah. And yes. I think there's a lot of... Ziva, Emily yeah. Fletcher came and spoke to us with Todd Herman's group. That's, oh, that's amazing. That's yeah, yeah she's, I mean, she's a phenomenal yeah. and I think this yeah. is um it's a sort of a the, there's a lot of apps out there there's the sleep app the cam app the uh, headspace I just love your man's voice like I could yeah, listen yeah. to him forever but what that ends up doing is you're back into your phone again you're trying to get away from it with the Ziva and it sounds like Vedic as well it's it, you're self-sustaining you don't need your phone you don't need an app you don't need anyone you can sit in your car for 15 minutes 20 minutes, yeah. whatever you want, or you yeah. sit on the couch for five, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you're self-sustaining. And I think us in the digital yeah. world, we can become too reliant on more, another app, another checklist, yeah. another yeah. thing that we yeah. need to do. So I, I love the yeah. sound of that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's, oh, what, oh. That, that's a type of yoga, um, yoga meditation that Emily does is Vedic. That's right. Yeah. Oh, so, it's the same. So, yeah, but it's just yeah, her it brand. Yeah, but so she, she combines manifesting and, and mindfulness with Vedic meditation. So she yeah. does the three things all together. Yeah. I'm just doing the Vedic stuff and I haven't yet got to manifesting in vision boards. <laughs> oh, I'm a big fan of them. I love them. <laughs> as, I, as I sit here in Cape Town because I manifested it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I manifested it and I did a lot of hard work as well. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah exactly. so, so it's all good. Well, look at... Um, you can't have manifesting without action. No, you got to take some work, yeah, and, and, and put my house up in Airbnb. <laughs> so, so there was exactly. a lot of things that go. Um, so yeah. let's, let's wrap up and um, I'd just love to, with, with all the experience and advice that you've got, like, there are agencies out there who are just starting out or perhaps somebody is in a very, um, you know, maybe a bit of a dark place. It's the beginning of the year and they're actually going, God, what am I going to do? Like, is there any advice or tips that we could give an agency that you would love them to understand right now um, to, to help, especially where you've been? You started off with one agency, you had it another way and now where you are right now. What sort of yeah. tips could you give an agency um, I think today? I think you have to decide what success looks like for you. I know. And, and don't think that you have to do it a certain way um, yes. or be a certain thing or earn a certain revenue thing or even be a HubSpot goal partner or whatever. That's good. That's all well and good for HubSpot that you, you know, go up there partner to you, but it might not be the right thing for you or your business. So Correct. I think you need to really carefully think about what success looks like for you. 
Yes. Make sure, keep, keep a solid eye on your profit margins. Yes. <laughs> profit. Mm. First, know the, over, know your over yeah, revenue doesn't mean any. I hear agencies oh, yeah. learn it, you know, oh, we've hit a million. You cost you, it costs you <laughs> to, to hit the million. You know? yeah. Why? You know, mm. why? That, mm. That's not a, that's not an, I don't think that's a, that's, for me, that's not a marker of success. Correct. It's a kind of a vanity metric. So, yeah. you know, what does it look like for you, you know, encompassing your whole life with your, you know, your agency? Because as an entrepreneur and a business owner, it does suck in your whole life and your, yeah. it impacts your whole life. So, so what does success look like for you? Be really, you know, be really mindful about that and um, yeah, make sure that you've got a really keen eye on your profit margins and, and focus on the areas that, um, that you can deliver the most success in for your clients. And it's usually the stuff that you are drawn to and that you're good at. Um, and there are so many other, other options for outsourcing and, and, partnering to deliver the rest of the stuff or not or not that's right you can just get your partner network do it and refer and go i have a great agency for you over here (laughs) i do this yeah (laughs) exactly oh phenomenal and if anyone wants some help with actually figuring out where to start with that there's two books that i recommend traction by gino wickman has a whole area about your vision traction organizer and i'm let's just face it i'm going to plug my own book we've got sold over 500 copies so far that's 500 agency owners who've listened and read the book and are hopefully getting you know i get some good feedback so get my book a happy healthy digital agency and the first chapter of that is about you sitting down as an agency owner and deciding what are you building in, where are you going what kind of crew what kind of team do you need um, and get started there so we'll put the links for that in the show notes as well Sarah an absolute pleasure seven years <laughs> god it's flown it is flown and no. we no doubt no, what, I know it's, incre- it's incredible. we're really not that old I know not at all no I just no. mean <laughs> I just mean there's still people <laughs> signing up for HubSpot today that are new agencies you know like a, I, no, I only meant in uh, HubSpot years but an absolute pleasure to have you on the show stay safe and I hope that rain keeps yeah. raining down in Australia I can see oh, it on the no. news let it come yeah. we're all That's praying rain we're all praying and manifesting <laughs> rain for you guys we're, we'll send some down for, we'll send some down from Ireland we're sending it your way so uh thanks a million for coming on the show thank you oh it's a good pleasure great hey great fun